the SEO Racing Network tonight. We are here Thursday Night Thunder. This is Carlin Hicks in the booth with the uh, reigning Formula One Camel GT champion, Tier Nizzle. Say hi to the crowd there, Tier. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right, we're here at the track for tonight's Thursday Night Thunder. It's night 8 of 11 in SCL 23 Daytona Speed Weeks. It's been a fantastic Speed Weeks, and now we are set for the first points races of the night. We've got a special exhibition here, the Miller Lite 40 and the Super Stock Cars, and that will be followed by our championship event, the SCL Sportsman's Division, featuring the uh, Boss 302 Mustangs. So uh, this race here will be a 16-lap shootout exhibition style and uh really looking forward to this one i think uh you've been out here in these cars tier what do you think about these uh, zach speed fords uh zach, zach speed, speed fords, fords are really, really good. good uh they got, they got quite a bit of a punch, punch off, off the uh start, start finish, finish line, line you know when, know, when you're getting you get going, going uh, so you got to be careful, careful not to spin out but uh, uh overall these cars are a lot of fun very you have to focus yourself on how your aerodynamics are working on your car you know get inside drafts and just really getting your runs in, but, uh, yeah, these cars are a lot of fun. Should be a good race, hopefully, if everyone can, uh, you know, keep their nerves. Oh, absolutely. I think the key thing for either of these, and we'll get to the sportsman's race later on, but for here in the uh, super stock race, it's uh, you got to maintain your momentum. Uh, you've got to have, you know, uh, that's the key thing, I think, is to know, you know, where you can afford to burp the throttle a little when you're stacked up on people. you got to have somewhere to take the run. It's not an easy thing to do, but uh, that's really the key to these races. Get yourself up in the position. There's no real pit strategy here. There's no pit stops under yellow or anything for a sprint race like this. So you just got to work your way up and uh, go about as, you know, get yourself in a position at the end where you have a shot at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, these cars are really, really, really good at that. that. You know, all, all the skills, skills you learn on these cars, these cars will apply pretty much to any other car you run on oval, so... Really good way for some of these rookies to kind of, you know, build up some time on track and really just start to get a feel for it all. So, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, explain to the people in the Inside SCL Racing broadcast earlier, uh, Thursday Night Thunder is really the oldest thing in SCL. I mean, even Winston Cup didn't start till Season 7, IndyCar till Season 10. You know, there was many, many, the early seasons were basically short track racing different types of stock cars different types of road cars that they would run on these in these sprint races that's how the league started out and so this has always been a, a feeder series to the bigger divisions we've run all kinds of different cars and series on this night and uh the sportsman's a brand new one the super stocks is a brand new one and uh as you said i think it's good development we do have a lot of veteran drivers in here tonight as i'm looking down the list here uh, stay down killings your Daytona 500 pole sitter for this season uh, You know, we've got a uh, Stas Rita HCC Kips these are all people who go back many many seasons and then plus a ton of the uh, second season drivers who joined us last season on PS4 so It's a really good mix of a field here and and should be for the sportsman's race later on Yeah, yeah. um yeah, just, just for the, for the veterans, veterans, you know, this, this game's game an entirely different beast than something like Gran Turismo. Turismo. It really, I, in my opinion, it's a lot harder to drive fast. Uh, cars, cars are not as forgiving, I think. think. Um, so, so, get yeah, they, they, Gran Turismo is a good base, good base but, but I think Project, Project cars, cars, you really, you know, you, know, you take, take your driving, driving skill even further, further with this game. So, oh yeah, this this is definitely that are popping back in. Good. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough it's a transition. A lot of the veterans are going through that. I myself did. It's it's a step up. Uh, there are certain things that are the cars, as you said, are uh, are less forgiving in some circumstances. There's some things about GT6 that were less forgiving. You had you had to main uh, your tire wear. Maintaining your tire wear was so much harder in that game because the tires wore so much faster that you could you know guys like me who were fast on old tires and could and could maintain it used to get an advantage an advantage that is a lot is is still here in this game but to a much less degree but i think you're right about that it's the it looks like the whole room did their mute thing hopefully just to us otherwise they're going to be uh 
having room problems here. But there we are at Daytona. We are in the daylight here. It's uh, partly cloudy, medium cloud cover. Should not affect the track temperature too much. Uh, we'll let you in on that here in a minute. Two and a half mile oval, obviously. Uh, bumpy, high speed. Uh, that's Daytona. Most of us are ready to get out of Daytona by uh, the end of speed weeks here, but we start every single SCL season this way, going back to season 12. And really, the, the biggest, the biggest thing, thing here, here, I think, is just people staying with it, right, being able to hold their line. Um, you know, no one's intentionally trying to take people out, or they're not, you know, intentionally trying to block as much, but just situational awareness and being able to hold the line is two key things here at Daytona. Oh, absolutely. It's the it's the thing we often we have often told uh, drivers that if you don't have a run or if you have nowhere to take a run, then you don't have a run. That's the key. Um, that's one of the things where it was harder. It was uh, much harder on GT6 at Daytona to uh, keep the car underneath you, and you could be pressured a lot easier by somebody behind you into making a mistake uh here you can get a couple guys up front that are running side by side and racing each other and they'll back the line up behind them and uh that's basically what happens here these guys are uh, they're probably unmuting their uh mics here and trying to fix that situation i i do believe we that that that's not a glitch i believe that they do that because they think that uh you know they think that uh it's going to, you know, people are going to be racing straight without having to use instructions over the mic. But uh, short of using Discord or some kind of service like that, I'm not really sure what we can do about that. Yeah. Hopefully no, I can Discord unmute it. would not be a bad idea. Um, one thing I noticed is they, ch they keep changing the game volumes a little bit. So now it seems the microphones are a little on the quiet side. Uh, kind of hard to hear people at times. Right, let's see if they're going to get rolling if they get all this fixed. It's a situation where I'd like to see a little more typing out of the race marshals to let everybody know what's going on. There we go. And they're going to be retiring to the pit box here, it appears. So As apparently uh, I'm getting feedback or something on my microphone. Uh, guys in the comments, give me a heads up uh, if something fixes it. I'm going to try moving the mic maybe farther from my face. I don't know what to tell you there. Should be seeing these guys retire to the pit box. Little technical snafus with the SMS server here as we get started. Guys trying to uh, unmute each other. I believe they lost a driver, so they're probably going to be uh, retiring to the pit box here. But yes, if you guys are following along, you take your controller, not your wheel. Go to each individual name. Press options to pause the, your situation. Go to each individual name and unmute them and it should uh, take care of that situation for you. Um, only possible thing I can think about that is, are they maybe hearing my microphone through uh, your headset? I don't know. I don't believe so. I have a, I have a closed headset. Yeah, same here. Uh, yeah, guys. Anybody following along, as we said, you take your controller, you hit options, you go down to their names where you see the name muted, you click on their name, I believe you hit the square button, and it'll pull up, uh, it'll say unmute player. I'm not sure if I can do that from here. No, I can't here in the uh, broadcast booth.
Hopefully we'll get these guys rolling here soon. We'll give you a starting lineup as soon as we have them lined up and ready to go. Stand by here. All right, looks like they're going to start rolling out. All righty. Looks like we got 15 cars here in the race. Somebody blew their motor. I don't believe they're going to do a retire and restart for anybody here in the exhibition race. So whoever it was, just stand by, guys. And uh, wait for uh, the uh, second race of the evening. Sportsman's race, the Permatex 100. As I was saying earlier in the sportsman's race, we've had many different classes, series run that event. Late model sportsman, uh, Trans Am series. But that event itself goes back to season 12. Thursday night right here on the Speedway. And there's the Zebra. Everyone's rolling. Zebra, a rookie making his SCL debut here tonight. Just joined the community. We're glad to see him out here. He will have to buck qualify to try to get into the sportsman's race. And it looks like another rookie independent driver, SFG fan, is going to be up front. So let's give you a roll down here through the starting order at the uh, front of the field. Independent is uh, SFG fan. Starting second will be Enstaza from FST Blue Flag Racing there in the purple car. Starting third is your Daytona 500 pole sitter. That stay down killing from Team Dana Moore. Starting fourth is Baron Von Stosch from B Benson Speed Equipment. Starting fifth, JME Motorsports, Rita St. James. Starting sixth for Zenith Motorsports is Wanma. Starting seventh, Independent driver Misa Pamel from Germany. Starting eighth from Renaissance Racing, it's Watcher. Starting ninth, Kips Hall and Ass from Team Dana Moore Racing, the longtime SCL veteran making his return. Starting tenth in the Sunday Cup League car will be Johnny Benson for Benson Speed Equipment. Starting eleventh, as they're moving around there, looks like Johnny's moving back, messing up our, our order here. 10th and Kip, 11th will be Johnny Benson. Starting in 12th is HCC from Zenith Motorsports. There we go. Starting 13th for Team Dana Moore Racing is Daz, the second season SCL driver. Starting 14th from JME Motorsports, the reigning IndyCar Series champion and winner here Sunday in Gatorade Duel number two. That's Cole. And 15th for TOW Racing is Cali Vitals. All right, they're coming around. They're going to be taking green this time by. Uh, I don't know if you can put it up on the screen or not, Tiernizel. I do like to, uh, um, I do like to use put the map on for the fans if you can. Yep. There you go. Gives you an idea where they're at. We don't necessarily, you know. I like that bottom scroll too, but hey, either way, more info the better. We're looking good. 15 cars here for the Miller Lite 40. And they'll be going green this next time by. All right, so Bard put money on big movers early on. Cold would be one of them. Do what Johnny's up to as well. Uh, Kip's hauling ass, never one to slouch. And, uh, that Wanma. should be a good start. Wanma has been a... Uh, I would say the most improved driver in the SCL over the last over the last half of last season and the off season, the most improved driver by far. Oh, I would agree 100%. He's uh, really in this preseason. He showed how much he's matured, especially on ovals. Uh, I think he whooped up on us. Uh, what was that last week over here? At Thursday Night Thunder. Yeah, he had yeah. Won, won the sweep. Let's see what he can do tonight. We're gonna go ahead and ride along as we get ready for the start here. They're coming to the line. 16 laps of competition. We'll call it by the number on the board here, and we're green, green, green. 
Cole gets to the outside, bangs the wall a little, but gets a good jump, and he will take it out. Ooh, and he slides oh. himself. That is a solo. He catches the car and gets it going. Excellent job, and he might still be able to uh, get himself back on the end of this thing. We'll get ourselves back up to the front on our trackside cam there. It looks like Barron has taken the lead on the outside. These cars all jumbled up at the moment. Three, Three wide. wide. Let's see if he'll stick. Three wide through turn three. On board with SFG fan who went from the pole. He's back running in fifth in this up front pack now. Oh, there's definitely oh. a caution right there. As I see two cars going around, the yellow flag is going to be out here at Daytona oh on lap three. On his roof ends up Wanma. Somebody got loose. I'm willing to bet they clipped the wall. That's unfortunate that those two got put upside down beside each other. That'll, uh, oh, looks like they got that sorted out. Usually that uh, stops you from resetting. Yeah, it could definitely be a reason for a DNF there. Some wrecks you don't walk away from. Mm -hmm. But they're going to line it back up here. Barron has wound up in the lead. Rita St. James in second. Misa Pamela in third. And Staza is fourth. And SFG fan will run in fifth. We'll go... Uh, track side on, on our leader bear and the pits will not be open as we are going to be uh, preparing for the restart this next time by as they come through turn two on the back stretch typical Daytona wreck there I'm sure two cars one came off the wall maybe some dirty air sucked them together and uh, around they went I think that might have stemmed from going three wide maybe someone was trying to stay up there hit the wall and uh Kind of took everyone else with them, so didn't really see exactly what happened, but that's what I think would have. That's Daytona for you, especially on early on the start. Tires are still a little cool. Got to, uh, there's no rubber down on the track, as we've said in broadcast before. The live track is excellent in this game. The track definitely changes over the course of the race. And uh, when you don't have a whole lot of rubber down, there's not as much grip early on. And... Uh, that kind of stuff can definitely come back. As I said, it is a warm day here. Relatively light cloud cover. Not hot. Springtime in the uh, in SCO. We have 10 week seasons. The first three weeks are spring, four through seven, summer, eight through 10 are fall. So we got pretty mild temperatures. Definitely not as hot as it'll be come summertime when we get back here for the Firecracker 400. But uh, Barron's up in front here as they're going to be coming back towards the line for the restart. We've taken the flag here on lap 5 of 18 in the Miller Lite 40. SCL Super Stock Division. And as we come to the line, we are green, 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 green. A couple cars bouncing to the outside. Looks like Johnny Benson. <clears throat> A number of Rita British flags out there. And Rita going to the outside here. Does she have help with her? And she settles back in. Looks like she's looking to pick a line. Rita and I both very similar. We like to take turn one a little wider to allow you some scrub. And then if you can get slotted in on the bottom, that's where you want to be. As we're on board here with Stay Down Killing running in the eighth position just behind the main pack. He's got Johnny Benson directly on him. Somebody down on oh. the bottom there. Looks like Barron caught the bottom. These cars are checking up. Let's see if the field and back catches this. Somebody going through the no, middle way too hard. Good. Yeah. That is definitely a caution. And I'll tell you from driver experience, there was plenty of time to see that developing. Yep. Yeah, that someone was getting a little overzealous there. Yeah, in the back there, one of the British flag cars might have been Johnny Benson. There was plenty of time to see that one developing. And uh, should have got off their throttles way earlier than that. That looked like a very avoidable incident there. They got... Barron got on the apron in the corner, started that chain reaction, but uh, I believe he's, he got back up and caught it pretty well. And most of the first pack there just about had it caught, and then a couple cars came flying in, and that's how those incidents unfold. You know, it, when you get a bad start and you get that long toe, you get you know an amazing run into turn three and four, and I think most or some people decide they want to try and take that run somewhere, and you just really can't do it around here three wide just nigh impossible unless you know you got three really good guys going there all right looks like mice pamel the uh 
German independent driver is going to be out front now with Rita on and Barron still in third. Cali in fourth stay down in fifth as they're heading down here. You've got uh, two former winners at Daytona there in various series in the top five. Rita's won there in the uh, Indy Cars and Winston Cup and not to mention many support classes and uh, stay down. Also a former uh, winner at Daytona. I believe he won the Firecracker 400 in the Winston Cup Series several seasons back. And so they're going to be taking the green on lap 7 of 18 here in the uh, sports, the uh, super stock race. And right behind, stay down. You've got the Zebra Watcher Kip in the right there in the middle of the pack. Kip, of course, the uh, five-time IndyCar champion, season 19 Winston Cup champion. He also was the season 19 Daytona 500 champion. Now we're going to see if he can come shooting up through the field. He's got his camera right there on fifth place. Stay down on the cinematic view as we're coming back to the line. And these cars are going green. Oh, he shoots down to the inside. Did not appear to be contact there. Looks like HCC trying to catch that thing as we are on board with Daz running in ninth for Team Danamore on the outside line here. Some cars Pumped getting out a, a latency jumper. jump and a little bit of latency issues and cars jumping around here. SMS, if you're watching, uh, please fix the broadcast rooms. We need people to be able to hear each other. And uh, we, lo we love spreading your gospel, but we got to get a little bit better rooms here. Somebody up into the wall there coming back around, and that's definitely going to be a caution. Not sure who that was. And again, that's just another person trying to take it three wide when, you know, it's just really is not in the cards. Not really sure who that was in the white car that caught the wall. It looked like a blue and white car to me. Yep. Might be SFG so fan exactly. there. And Teth got up into the fence and then came down, and uh, that was all she wrote there. So we've got our, what is it, our third caution already here on lap eight. And it's possible that the competition restart rule will be used. Although for a race of this duration, I believe they may not. Although for tonight's sportsman's event, almost certainly. Zebra's on his roof there on the backstretch and may not have a reset button. The rookie driver in his debut may not have known to do that. And if that's the case, he's going to be a DNF in here in this afternoon's race. They may throw him a bone. Uh... One thing I noticed is if you crash at a certainly bad time, then uh, it'll just make you stuck and, you, you know, your game will freeze. We'll see if they uh, give them a bump start here on the way by. As it's Rita St. James who wound up out in front. Yeah, so upon review of that uh, latest incident, it looked like it was... Uh, the young, or the zebra who actually brought it out, he was trying to make that pass on the outside and just uh, bounced her off the wall a little bit and unfortunately caused that. Nobody, nowhere for anyone to go behind him. And it looks like he's yep. definitely, he's going to have to uh, DNF this race and not finish as he could not reset the car. Make sure you have your reset buttons on, guys, when, uh, when that such a thing happens. As they're going to be coming to the green now with Rita St. James, Mice Pamel, Baron, Kip, and Callie, your top five. Looks like uh, four different teams and an independent represented in that top five. As they're coming down to the start finish line, and we are green with 10 to go. Well, another three wide. Looks like that was let's, SFG, uh, man, to save it. Let's get on board with Johnny Benson there as he's coming through here on the, uh, as he's coming through the track. Johnny currently running in ninth place on the outside. Going to try to get the outside line going. There's a big line of cars led by Baron Rita's leading that outside line right now as she went to it, either intentionally or not. 
And it looks like these guys are settling in into two lines with uh, just about everybody right there. SFG fan has lost the draft just a little bit there at the back, but uh, 13 cars up there with the front pack. Uh, this is about the point in the race where everyone starts to settle in. They've got their cars figured out a little bit more. They've calmed down a little bit. So uh, hopefully we can see a good race from here on out. They are right on top of each other. Somebody goes around on their own, it appears. I did not see contact there. I'm wondering if we'll see the flag out because I did not see contact there. Looks like somebody caught the apron. That might have been cold who caught the apron. Yeah, yeah they're not slowing down, so... Seems like Looks like a solo incident, and they're staying green. As of right now, it's Barron leading on the inside line. He's got Johnny Benson directly behind him. The outside line there has got Rita being pushed by Kip. So it's a, it's a pick em situation right now. You see the running order on your pylon, but uh, those are two separate lines. Three wide, oh. and that Johnny. one, that was Johnny Benson all the way. Went three wide going into turn one. Took the wall and took out about uh, half the field there. And they're going to get rolling out of this. It looks like Baron and Rita and Kip are the cars that mainly come through it. SFG is going to benefit all the way at the back here, as was Cold, who had lost a draft, as they're going to cycle back through. But I think that one was on board uh, Johnny Benson's car. He was three wide up in turn one, and uh, there was nowhere to go. To be fair, I don't think that was Johnny's fault. He was already right behind Rita. I think it was the people underneath that kind of forced the issue there. Um, I'll take another look at it again while we get under caution. Really tough to see. Three wide, it could have been on anybody there. Definitely it was Johnny who got into the wall, or got put into the wall, and... Uh, came back across the track but uh, as we're looking at it now we're going to have a restart here after the after caution number four with seven laps to go with Baron out front Rita's in second Kip in third SFG fan in fourth and stay down in fifth yeah so really quick update on that caution yeah it did seem like uh, Johnny was trying to get on the outside of Rita it seems like he had a bit of a run and just uh yeah, ran out of room there as we had Watcher uh, DNF here, looks like he's pulled it into the pits now. So we're down to 13 cars on the track. As I said, those of you waiting, stand by. We're going to have the uh, sportsman's race right after this as we go green with seven to go. Up. Oh. Who is Damn, that was, appears to be cold. Maybe spooled it up too much. It looks like he got on and lost the traction and... Uh, Round he went, but it seems to be a solo incident as everybody's still at speed on board here with HCC and 8th trying to get the outside line. He's for the newly formed Zenith Motorsports. He's got a teammate in the field directly inside of him, I believe, in Wanma. Uh, he's going to try to go three. Stick. He's going to go three wide. He better make it go. All the way up on the outside. All right, now they just... Lost that side draft there. You start sneaking back. Yep, you can see Rita start to peer back in view. Come on, guys, hold on to it. As he's holding on out there on the outside, we've got three lines of racing here at Daytona, and they're hanging on to it for now. As there's now six to go with the line, right, and then ACC caught the wall, and there they go. Three wide. You can make a pass that way, but you cannot run that way for any significant amount of time. And all it took was him catching the wall, and HCC brings out the next yellow there. So it takes out literally everyone, but Kip and Juanmo managed to uh, avoid that incident. Kelly made it out pretty quick. Cold back up to fourth, and pretty much field's all just recovering from that. So, yeah, I'm more or less. Not surprised at all. No, not at all. They, they they were coming around there. That it's it's very simple. That uh, you can make if you can make that pass, because uh, I myself would try it on the straightaway if I thought I could make it by the corner. If I couldn't make it by the corner, I'd probably bail out. And uh, that's pretty much. I mean, he had it. Just they were holding it very very well, and then uh, just caught that corner of the wall in the tri oval and around everybody went. But if you're going to go three wide, you better you better clear it and make it stick. 
in and that case. In these cars, more than any other, I think it's hard to do that because uh, as soon as you get out of that draft or side draft, it's like you're driving through syrup all of a sudden. Your car will slow way, way down. All right, looks like Kip has cycled back up towards the front with Wanma behind him, Cali in third, Cold in fourth, and SFG in fifth, and they're going to be going green here at the start-finish line. Let's see. Five to go at the line. I believe they're going to be green to the finish here shortly. Let's see if Barron tries to make a run back up to the lead. Barron out there in 12th. He's got Enstaza directly behind him, but the whole field in front of him. And they're green, green, green. Barron gets a jump after getting rear-ended a little bit there, but it is a fair start. He goes down to the inside of Rita. He's got Stay Down coming up, and uh, he appears to have an excellent run and, and a fair one. Did not get really a jump. He was just coming back through the gears as uh, recovering from that bump at the start. See, yep. Heads towards the outside. It looks like Cold's got the lead right now on the outside. Him and Kip are the front two cars, Kip and Cold, with the field stacking up behind them. Let's see, here's the key here as we come down to the finish. Who is in front at the line? Is it the outside line or the inside line? That's really the key here. Where are they at as they cross the start-finish line? It looks like it's Kip that time by. So we'll see what they have to do. They've got four laps to go here at Daytona. Somebody goes oh. around. Not really sure who that looks like. Rita St. James. I'm not sure if we are green to the finish. Rita and HCC go around, but I believe we are green to the finish, so these guys are going to finish this race out. It's like Rita caught the wall there. Oh, another person going around, it seems. Seems oh, catching it back up there. Oh, off. oh it seems to be mice panel. panel. Yeah. Oh on board at the back of the front group of what appears to be eight cars now. Stay they down. Dez and Stas trying to catch back up. It seems like they were involved in that incident. Uh, they, they can't. I believe that you can, but I don't know that they have enough time. They may not have enough time with just three to go now as they cross the line. These cars, two by two, you're on board with the last car in this front group on the inside row. That's Stay Down. Baron to his outside. It's Kip in the lead on the inside, Cold on the outside. In second, who's going to be in, who's in the lead at the line is really the key here. You can certainly tell who's experienced, but you can see the way they handle traffic. You can see Stay Down had a little bit of a run, had a little bit of a gap to try and make it go three wide, but he just knows it's not going to work out well for anybody, so good on him for not forcing the issue there. Absolutely. But as we see, go ahead. There's Johnny with the run up the outside. Johnny goes to Daddy the outside. Gotta have a lot of faith. Johnny goes three wide here in the corner. Does he hang on to it? Does he hang on to it? They're trying He's to make it stick. Got to get these guys. There it nope. is. Cole yep. got up into him as he's getting that dirty air and trying to hang on to it. You can run three wide for a while, but not for a real long while. And uh, as a result, they get knocked back, and we're left with Kip out in front, Barron's in second. Let's go cinematic cam here for the finish on the final lap as we've got Kip up front, Barron in second, right behind him. That's Callie in third on the outside line, I believe, SFG in fourth, directly behind him, and Wanma in fifth. As now, they're gonna be taking Callie's the white flag. A little bit far back starting this lap, and now that is exactly what you need to get that momentum up. Do that little gap just to get that little head of steam going. I'm willing to put money on Cali right now that he's going to make one hell of a run going into this last section. Let's see if he can. The outside line comes moving up. Cali's trying to get some help. Is there oh, weaving no, three wide? And they're going through turn three and four. We've got them two by two right now. Kips in the lead, Barron's in second. Moves. 
one on to the outside as he managed to slide in front of Cowley with a great move. Somebody goes around there. I believe that was Daz. No, that was not Daz. Cowley oh. goes around. Two more cars, then they go around across the start-finish line, but I believe Kip hung on to it as the entire field wrecks crossing the start-finish line, stuck together. But I believe we're going to have Kip taking the win with Baron Von yep. Stosh in second, Wanma in third, Cali Vitals in fourth, and Daz brings it home in fifth place. So an absolute wreck fest here at the Daytona International Speedway. But skittering across the line, it's the Team Dana Moore veteran, Kip's hauling ass, who wins the Miller Lite 40 here at Daytona. There are your final results. Yeah, I'd say that race is about uh, kind of what we expected. Just uh, people forcing it on the outside and just really uh, not getting the payoff they were expecting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A little bit of a wild gambling there. We'll hope that some of that gets shaken out by the uh, next race. But uh, we're going to be going off the air here for you guys. And uh, we'll be on back shortly for the... Uh, sportsman's race tonight the permatex 100 on behalf of tear nizzle this is carlin hicks we'll be back with you soon here on the scl racing network